Hello and welcome to the Fireside Grace Ministries channel. I am your host, Robin Cunningham with Fireside Grace Ministries. Today, I want to do a little bit of live dream interpretation. I am an I am an interpolator or interpretator, however you want to say it. Sometimes if I'm hungry and I'm thinking about tater tots, I call it interpretator. And sometimes if I'm thinking like my grandma used to say funny things like, um, she, what'd she say? One time she said, instead of dilapidated, she said it was dilapidated. I thought that was funny. So interpolator and interpretator. I actually got interpretator from one of our uh, mentors and the leader of Patria Ministry from Michael French. He says interpretator, and I think it's funny. I love it, <laughs> especially since he says it with that uh, Alabamian accent, interpretator, interpretator. Sorry, Michael, if you're watching this, that was a bad, uh, a bad, uh, what do you call it, impersonation. <laughs> I shouldn't have tried, but I did anyway. So dream interpretation. I'm going to give people a chance to get on with dream interpretation. I did just record a live tomorrow's headlines today. It's on rumble. We're just going to be switching and doing all of our tomorrow's headlines today on rumble. So go check it out. It's rumble.com backslash fireside grace. Go watch it. A lot of stuff in there that I cannot talk about on YouTube because of the YouTube censorship. Also, we are 100% aware that, uh, YouTube is definitely stifling our algorithms because we did a video live on Rumble and got 100 subscribers and 5,000 views within 24 hours. We did the same exact thing here on YouTube, and we got in one week 1.3 thousand views, only 30 comments, and maybe 100 thumbs up or whatever. So, um, and and maybe like 10 or 15 subscribers, if that. Okay, so we know we know what's up, YouTube. We know what's up. You're not fooling anybody. And, and if, if Twitter's doing it, then who else is doing it? It's It's been obvious for years, but look, it's back now. Uh, whatever. Um, <laughs> hopefully that doesn't get us banned. But if it does, rumble.com backslash Fireside Grace is where you find us. So I'm here to do a little dream decoding, so to speak. Um, and uh, just waiting for you all to put your dreams in the comment section. Otherwise, I'm going to go to our dream group that we created on Facebook a couple years ago. It is called... Uh, what does my dream mean on Facebook? As far as I know, it's the only what does my dream mean. There's only 952 members, um, but we're not trying to grow it. We're trying to help people. That's why we don't talk about it very often. And also interpreting dreams for 952 people could wear you out if you don't set up a uh, rule. So the reason I do d dream interpretation is not to establish that I'm uh, some mystical dream interpreter with all of the answers. It's to help you to be able to interpret dreams on your own which is why instead of just giving you the meaning of the dream, which we could totally do, I would love to do that. Like if I'm on a show somewhere and they're like, you want to do like some spitfire dream interpretations where we give you like one paragraph dream, you know, like John Paul used to do on uh, streams on a uh, day star where they would give him a dream and he would just interpret it. Uh, what I like to do is I like to teach through the dreams and John Paul used to teach through the dreams. Also, I learned a lot from John Paul Jackson. I watched everything that there was available out there on YouTube. And they there were people out there back in the day with uh, stream stuff. They would buy the courses, upload them onto their computers, and then they would put them on YouTube. And then they would be very um, dishonest about it and make money off of those videos that they had to pay for. And that is not cool. That's not okay. But also, at the same time, on the, on the backside of that, because they put those videos up there at a time when I didn't have money, I was able to watch them and learn everything that I could learn about dream interpretation. So everything that I teach you, I did not learn from John Paul Jackson, but I learned a lot of the basics, the principles and so forth. And I applied a lot of his teachings to my life and it's made a huge difference in my life. So what I would recommend is if you want to have a good foundation, I mean, we you can come to our site. We do a dream course, obviously, on firesidegrace.com. Um, it's under the online courses program to sign up for. It. It's free for anyone who's a hundred dollar a month uh, partner, or it is two hundred dollars for whatever, and it's good for a year. You can take it at your own pace. Otherwise, Streams Ministries International or Streams Ministries, if you Google them, 
they have they are John Paul Jackson's ministry. Uh, John Thomas is the person in charge of that now president, I, I suppose would be the word or general overseer or whatever you want to call it. Um, John Thomas is a great interpreter, interpolator. Uh, he is a great leader and really loves his people and his congregation. And, and you'll feel that love through the messages he gives, but he's also the pastor at Stream Church as well. So if you want to learn, I would highly recommend anything you can get from Streams, uh, uh, Dream Dictionary they have, any of it. Put in, uh, go and and watch. Take their their courses. It's all much less expensive than when John Paul was still here. Um, so go take their courses. Take the online courses. Get involved in their church if you're local in the community. Go and and be a part of that because it's been a huge part of our life. It's even the reason why we're here in Texas. And we haven't been doing too much with them because we've been very busy with our own ministry, but we we love them anyway. So we just want to support them uh, anyway. All right. So get your dreams in here. Um, this one person said I had a really long dream about 46 in it. I went to the wine cellar and brought up two crusader shaped red wine bottles i don't know what crusader shaped means um upstairs for him they were four of the same bottles but one only half full i'd need to see the rest of the context in that to have really any idea what that's talking about because wine could be talking about a cup of, of a cup of wrath and pouring out wrath or it could be talking about covenant it could be talking about intoxication or drunkenness four represents authority um, and you brought up two crusader shaped wine bottles for him. And he said there were four of the same bottles. So that is a little confusing to me. So if you want to email that to me, I'll take a look at it. It's fireside grace at yahoo.com. I'll take a look at that. Whoever your joke, jokey Kikai or however you say that. I'm sorry if I mispronounced that. So let me go ahead and pull up a dream here. And what does my dream mean while y'all are getting your dreams uh, loaded up? Also remember rumble.com backslash fireside grace. Go watch our newest um, latest and greatest tomorrow's headlines today, which we will be doing on there uh, moving forward. All right, so here's something. This is from, it just says group member. They don't have a picture or anything there. It's probably, it says an anonymous post. Okay, well, that's that's okay. You can be anonymous. Uh, so they're starting out here with giving history in the background. I'm not going to read that. Uh but what I will say is I don't need history or background in order to interpret a dream. You don't have to tell me any of this stuff. A lot of times what happens is people are trying to um, sway the interpreter to think what they're thinking about a dream. And that person may be way off. The dream will speak for itself. You don't have to have the background information. And a lot of times what will happen is it will cause confusion in an interpreter's mind or interpreter's mind. Um, and it will cause them to have a wrong interpretation. When you're interpreting a dream, you have to step outside of everything, assume you know nothing about anyone or anything, and just let Holy Spirit uh, take take hold and take control. Okay. So when people want to give me the background information, I will stop, politely say, I don't need the background information. The dream will speak for itself. And then they can tell me the background information afterwards. Okay. So I'm going to go ahead and skip this part. I'm going to go right to the dream. And it says, so for the last two weeks, I've been dreaming of her in her old house, which she sold around 15 years ago. I see her standing in the middle of the kitchen. She was always in the kitchen, baking, making stews and buffets. And in her hand, she holds her ashtray, her lighter on top and her fags in one hand and her cup. She always used in the other. OK, fags. This person's obviously from the UK. That is the word for cigarettes in the UK. Not a derogatory term towards um, people that are in same sex relationships. Okay. <laughs> I guess uh, just so you know. So in her hands, she, she holds her ashtray, her lighter on top, and her bags in one hand, and her cup she always used in the other hand. Uh, she keeps repeating she has to go, and everything starts disappearing, fading away slowly. I get really angry and tell they can't take all of her stuff and, and and must be yell they can't take all of her stuff. She insists it's okay and that they have to. I don't know who they is and no one is there, just me and my nan. So that must be her grandma. Next thing I know, she's fading away and then she's gone. The house is empty, no furniture, walls back to brick, no carpet, nothing. 
I really don't understand why I'm having these dreams there every night to the point it's stressing me out to sleep. What do these dreams mean? And it's the same one every night. Everything is exactly the same. Okay, so this is an excellent, um, an excellent one to talk about for uh, recurring dreams. Recurring dreams means there's a message, a pattern, or something that God is trying to share, say, or get out that. Uh, we have not gotten the memo yet. We haven't gotten the picture yet. Okay. So this is showing there's something happening that is affecting this person and they haven't gotten the message yet. So we have uh, the grandma in her old house, all this stuff. She passed away. Uh, it says my nan passed away in June this year of cancer. Okay. And that's what she, she posted in the top there. So I could tell that it was her grandma passing away. Like I said, I didn't read this. Uh, this stuff in the top. I'm just scrolling through our page here. Uh, and I saw, okay, so this person must have passed away because she's talking about her in the past tense and it's probably her grandma. All right. Now, what we have here is we take the dream form and you can take the symbols and the elements and uh, take out the, the symbol and put in the definition where the symbol is. So where there's the word house in here, replace it with family. Okay. So we're in her old family okay instead of house because house represents family or it can represent what's happening in your life right now so it's maybe her old family her old life we're gonna say family um i see her standing in the middle of the kitchen she's always in the kitchen baking so in the kitchen represents the heart of the home it's where you go to make preparations. It's very heartwarming. It's a place of service and acts of service and kindness and so forth. It really does bring unity. Is I don't know if you've ever been in parties, but back in my partying days, for some reason, we always all gravitated to the kitchen. Everybody be up in the kitchen, circling around the refrigerator, drinking beers and everything. And I don't condone that kind of behavior. I said before I was Christian, that, but that's what we used to do. And if you notice... That's what happens. People gravitate to the kitchen for some reason. It almost always happens. Um, <laughs> so this is like a, a place of gathering, her family gathering, all right? Her lighter on top of her, her cigarettes in her hands, or uh, all of this stuff, her ashtray. So she's got everything she always has. So what we're seeing here is that she has this image in her head of what family is, of what her grandma used to be like and what she stood for, okay? And... Um, and the cup that she always used. She's seeing things the way that they always were, not the way that they are currently, okay? And so then it goes, she keeps repeating, she has to go, and everything starts disappearing and fading away slowly. So basically what this is showing me is that the, the message, and remember, a recurring dream is a pattern you haven't gotten yet, is that th these things, there's things that she has to let go of. This has to go. You have to let go of this in order to get healing from this situation. She gets really angry and, and starts to yell that they can't take all of her stuff. And she insists that it's okay that they have to. I don't know who they is and no one is there, just me and my nan. Next thing I know, she's fading away and then she's gone. The house is empty, no furniture, walls back to brick, no carpets, nothing. So essentially what she feels like here is her... her you know, this is her family. This is how she feels about everything. Um, what's going on. And she sees this memory of her grandma somewhat fading away. All of the, all of, you know, the remnants or traces of her that she's always known that have always been there seem to be disappearing and fading away. And she's having a hard time accepting this or dealing this. And she's having a hard time dealing with the loss of her grandma and recognizing the fact that she's not there. So she's yelling, you can't have this stuff. You can't take this stuff. You can't have this. You can't take all of it. And her grandmother is assuring her again and saying, I have to go. They have to take this. This has to go. In order for this person to get healing, the reason they're having this dream is so that they can get healing and understand that it's okay. You're not losing the memories of your grandmother. She will always be there in your memories. But you have to let go of the way things always used to be and accept the way things are now. And that's part of the healing process. It's part of the grieving process. Okay. Um, and, and it's angering. Maybe there was like a promise or something. Uh, but it, it's time to come into that healing place. All right. So old house, old things, old ways represents issues from the past coming up. 
and she has to go and everything starts disappearing and fading away. And then she gets angry. So as things fade away, she gets angry and she's accusing other people, blaming other people of taking things, but there's nobody around. There's nobody taking anything. And this also would show a lack of unity in the house. She sees things. Everybody would come together. Everything was always the same, but now there's been this, this disconnection there's been this corruption where it seems like there's nothing around but everybody's taking a piece taking a bit you know taking a little bit here taking a little bit there and um rather than seeing that as you know honoring her memory yeah she sees it as uh robbing uh robbing the it's basically stealing from the family or they're they're losing everything that she she felt like she stood for everything that she held dear to. And she feels like there's a little bit of disconnect in the family. Like there's a little bit of abandonment. No one's there. Everything's bare and empty. And so the best way to do this is invite people over to your house for Thanksgiving or for Christmas, invite people over to your house to have fellowship, organize a family reunion, do something, but find a way to bring everybody together in a way that brings you peace. Okay. Uh, so there's that. Uh, I'll comment on that uh, real quick here. Uh, okay, N let's see. The next one is, uh, I dreamt that I worked with my daughter's coach. I needed to move his truck. I was backing into a parking spot and hit the car behind it. Him and his wife came running over, fuming mad. I started crying and was so apologetic. I should have known better when driving a different vehicle to be more careful. There was no damage to either vehicle, but they didn't really say anything, so I was worried they were going to charge me anyways. Then I moved the truck up by pushing it after they walked away. Okay, so this is an interesting dream. Now, let's use the formula here. She dreams she's at work with her daughter's coach or that she works with her daughter's coach. Okay, so we're going to take that and assume that that's important, right? So she's working with her daughter's coach. So what is a coach? Coach represents someone who instructs, helps, or coaches somebody. <clears throat> Joke's on you, devil. I've got water. All right. So she's working with someone that's helping their daughter get through something or overcome something or something like that, right? She needs to move his truck. Uh, the needing to move a truck. A truck represents the ability to carry heavy loads or burdens. So she wants to help this person. <coughs> this is establishing a pattern. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so this is establishing a pattern. She's trying to help. She's worked. She dreams she's working with the coach. She needs to move the truck. So this is a pattern. The truck is the ability to help carry things or move things. It, it's a greater ability than, let's say, a sports car or something like that. It's functional. It's practical. She's helping the coach. The coach is helping the daughter. There's something she's doing to try and help out this person that's helping her daughter. So she's backing into a parking spot and hits the car behind it. So we've got another pattern here. Backing in, car behind, backwards, something with the past. So she's she's trying to help. And she's trying to back into something from the past. Past represents, uh, or back, back, or backing up represents things from the past. But that's the direction she's headed in right now. Instead of just pulling into the spot, she's trying to back in. Essentially, showing she's trying to cover her rear. Him and his wife come running over, fuming mad, and she starts crying and was so apologetic. So something happened where she was trying to help and kind of take control of things. But a past issue came up and they they hit so they they collided with or had a conflict with somebody else, an accident. She did something by accident that caused a lot of anger. And she felt like she should have known better and been more careful driving someone else's vehicle. So in in trying to help this person, she should have been more careful. And she saw that there was no damage to the other vehicle, so the other persons that's involved, but didn't say anything. So now she's worried that she's gonna come under judgment for it. So Essentially, what the dream is 
And then she moved the truck by pushing it after they walked away. So she still finished what she was trying to do. But this time, instead of using uh, the truck's natural power, she she did it in her own strength instead. Okay, so what we have here is her daughter is going through something right now where she has a coach that's helping coach her. It could be with sports or something. But because she's using a truck, it represents the ability to help shoulder a burden or something along those lines. So she's trying to help her daughter and help the person that's helping her daughter. And instead, what's happening is she's causing a little bit of a commotion, a ruckus, and, and doing something by accident, knowing that she should be more, more careful. And this is something that she's done in the past before. Um, and it hurts her uh, essentially emotionally. And she's very sorry and apologetic. So she's gone into a place of repentance. So, um, but even though the people didn't really say anything, there was no damage. The person's the person that she, that, that this happened to, there was no damage where maybe she backtracked or backslid or whatever. Um, she feels like she's still going to come at her judgment. So she's then trying to fix things in her own power anyway. OK, so that's what the dream means. Now, here's what we do when I give a dream. I like to take and flip it and put give give a person some I call it. Uh, uh, what is it? Operational intel or functional intelligence or whatever you want to call it. And <clears throat> this is where you you take and apply. What the dream means and how do we fix it? So what I would say is, you know, you, you did something, you felt, you feel bad about it. It's something that you've done in the past, caused a little bit of damage. It's no big deal. Don't try to fix things in your own power, but let God fix it because you already feel bad and you've already repented and move forward. Um, whatever the burden is that you, you feel like you have to bear um, and help this person to, to help your daughter it just maybe take a step back and say, Lord, what do you want to do? How can you do this? Okay, so that's the interpretation uh, of that. All right, now let's see if you all have some dreams here in the comment section. Remember to go to our Rumble and watch the newest fire, the newest Rumble. I just posted it a half an hour ago or so, uh, maybe 40 minutes ago on rumble.com backslash fireside grace because we're going to be doing our tomorrow's headlines today there instead of on here all right <sighs> should be interesting because all those people that we don't anyway all right so zio hey zio how's it going by the way my dream i was wearing light color pants almost white i had three coffee ring stains from my mug two rings overlap and a dark third one was faint by itself each time i look down they fade then disappear Okay, so what that represents is your pants represent what you're walking in, um, and that's the compassion that you have. It's light brown. That's compassion from from God. And there's some things that uh, are affecting your walk with God because pants you wear, it's what you walk in, right? That's affecting your walk. Two things are overlapping, which means they're, they're separate issues, but they overlap, meaning that— and. Um, uh, they affect each one kind of ties into the other one. And the third one is its own separate issue. So there's three separate issues you're seeing um, <clears throat> that have kind of stained your walk in compassion with God. And each time you look down at them, they disappear. So what that's showing me is when when you pay attention to it or when you focus on those things and and, you know, intentionally become mindful of those things, you uh, it causes the issues to go away. So if you ignore the issue, it will remain. But if you focus on the issue, it will bring healing. Okay, next. <clears throat> Disciple for Yah. I had a dream of me hugging a deformed African boy. He was so happy to have a loving hug. I could feel God's love radiate around us. I as well saw the number 33.3, or it must be 33.3, .3, so that's probably a metric thing. Um I saw the number 33 three different times. Oh, I was wrong. <laughs> Surprise, I'm human. Uh, so uh, it was <clears throat> three different times while asleep. Okay, so I don't know if that's separate or part of the dream, but what that dream is showing is that if you show love to the broken, uh, deformed, or or whatever people, uh, whether it's the African community 
or African American community or whatever it is that that will make these people feel loved. That if you embrace them and accept them for who they are, that will make them feel loved and it'll be a God thing. Number 333 represents a divine uh, covenant with God that this is what will happen. So let's see. I can't pronounce this name. Maybe it's Illich Irias, right? I'm not sure. But in my dream, I see multiple construction tower cranes falling down on multiple job sites. In the dream, the tower cranes crumble all alike like it was orchestrated. So a crane is designed to lift things up. So there's things that have been lifted up or exalted that are toppling down. And what this would represent to me is probably strongholds that are coming down. <clears throat> Suji Han. Hi, we got your package, by the way. We're not sure what to do with it, but we have it. Is one of my dreams I had. Oh, in one of my dreams, I had a redheaded lady whose right hand was gold on the thumb pointer and middle finger. I don't understand why that was pointed out. The person didn't make it later in the dream. Not sure exactly what that means, um, that they didn't make it in the in the dream. But <clears throat> anyway, they have a red-headed lady. So if she, and she has gold, so I'm going to assume this is a positive context. Your hair, in this case, represents what you think, how you think about things. Um, so red would represent anointing and wisdom, uh, salvation, because bl red for bloodshed, right? Um, and gold represents purity. The thumb represents the apostle because it's opposable. The pointer represents the prophet because they point things out. They point out sin. They point out God's word, etc. And the middle finger, I'm not going to put it up by itself, but this one right here represents uh, pastor. So it's apostle, prophet, pastor, right? So this is pastoral. So these are the three things that this person on their hand uh, it, it, they operate with a with purity in in these three areas: a, a apostolic, prophetic, pastoral. Um, I'd need to know more about what was going on in the dream, uh, but it, that that is pretty important. So that's why those were highlighted. It's dealing with the apostle, the prophet, and the pastor, and the purity in those. Uh, the walk with those things. And so it would represent anointing, wisdom, covenant, and, you know, headship because it's red really stands out. <sighs> okay, so let's see. Timothy, Nathan, what you do? All right, Nathan, I have a question. If you have a brother that you live with, but he eats all your food because he doesn't prioritize buying food and you feel unchristian saying no to a hungry brother in that moment, tell him to buy his food. It's okay. Um, <laughs> don't stop him from eating you know, necessarily, but tell him to buy his own food. Tell him you, you have to help out, you know, maybe he doesn't have money though. So it is what it is. Now, part of being a Christian is not being passive aggressive. I really don't like passive aggressiveness. Okay. Setting boundaries is healthy for Christians and far too often we don't do it. So set a boundary. And if the boundary has been set enforce it, but make sure that you do so in love. Okay. All right, so let's see. Disciple for Yah. Thank you, Robin. I tried to interpret myself, but when you had given it, it made more, much more sense. You're welcome. I don't even know what dream I interpreted, but you're welcome. Jessica S. <clears throat> Hello and shalom. I feel like the Lord said you need peace, so I just speak peace, blessing, and wholeness over you in Jesus' name. All right. My son dreamed this when he was five. I was in a giant endless hallway with ceilings at least 100 feet and giant pillars, and it was all white, and I saw demons and angels scattered up and down the hallway. And there was a girl in the middle of the hall in front of me wearing a crown of thorns. Interesting dream. Okay, so a hallway represents transition because you go from one room or one place to the other. It's transition, like a bridge would represent transition. Uh, airplane can represent transitioning into your destiny, launching off, branching off, launching out, so forth, stuff like that. Okay. So he's in a giant endless hallway. So it feels like there's a transition that can't, that just isn't ending. 100 feet would represent 100 years. Uh, it's like 100 feet high. So it feels like, you know, a long time, 100 years could be representing a generational thing, generational issue, or something that's going on. I would, um, doesn't say that he's in school or anything like that. So, 
There's giant pillars. There's demon and angels scattered up and down the hallway. So in the middle of this transition, <clears throat> there is uh, he's he's seeing uh, different things in warfare, angels, demons and so forth. And it feels like as he's learning these things and seeing these things, discerning these things, that it's just an it, basically an endless barrage. Like there's no end in sight um, for all of this that's going on. Right. Um, I'm sure that there will be more there, but the girl in the middle of the hallway. So the, the, if there's a middle of the hallway, it's not endless. Just want to point that out. So about halfway through this seemingly long, arduous journey that he's transitioning through, he's seeing something and it's a girl, uh, with a crown of thorns on her head. So the crown of thorns is usually what Jesus wears. The crown of thorns was something that's mocking. It's a, it's a, they put it on him as a mockery and it represented penetrating, you know, his, his thoughts and his skin and, uh, the, the, all that stuff. Right. So I feel like without proper context that this could be representing a person whose thoughts are, uh, maybe a mocking spirit, uh, mocking Jesus, or perhaps, someone who's sharing in this suffering with Jesus. But to me, I feel like in my spirit that it's a mocking spirit in the, in this case. So I feel like there should be more to the dream, but that's about uh, that. Okay. So I was just to ask, just about to ask you what's going on on an airplane or boarding an airplane. Okay. And then somebody emailed me a dream. Okay, perfect. All right. So let's see how long have I been doing this video? 31 minutes. I will, uh, let's see if I have one more and then I will. I will end it. Okay. Do, 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 do. Okay. Here's a dream. Uh, it says, I had a dream. I let a man who wanted to date me spend time with me and then sleep in bed with me that night. We didn't have sex or anything, but I did it and didn't hide it from my family. Afterwards, I started worrying they would tell my boyfriend what happened, and I knew if they did that he'd break up with me. What does that mean? Okay, so then she goes on and talks about, I would never do this in real life, and uh, so what does this dream mean? All right, so <laughs> here's what the dream means. Sex is not always a bad thing. It's not always talking about perversion before Mankind fell, sex was a good thing. God created sex to be good. So get it out of your head that anytime there's sex in a dream, that you're in a state of perversion or you're suffering or struggling with lust or you're thinking about cheating on your husband, wife, girlfriend, boyfriend, whatever, get all of that out of your, your head, all right? Interpret the dream that's in front of you. Don't interpret from doctrine. Interpret what is in front of you. Right. And common dream interpretation is common sense. It's not it's not really hard to figure out dream interpretation. We all practiced interpreting dreams when we were in school, when they would make you read a poem. And then the teacher would ask you, what does this poem or what does a short story represent? And you would say, well, this is what it represents. This is what they're talking about. That's the same exact thing as dream interpretation. It's literally common sense. And then if you can't figure something out, you go to the Bible. Like, you are obviously, you've got to have Holy Spirit. You've got to have him leading you because the, you have to be able to discern what a symbol means, where to find it, because there's a lot of different meanings for symbols. But if you get locked in on a symbol, this one symbol always means this one thing, like a snake. Someone's like, snake always represents evil and lies and demons. Well, what about the fact that a snake represents someone who sees something coming from far off so it can represent prophetic? It could be false prophetic, but it could represent prophetic because they had good eyesight. What about the fact that the snake could represent shrewdness or discernment? What about those things? Um, or flexibility, being flexible, you know? What about that stuff? Or sharks are bad. Well, what about the fact that a shark has positive attributes? Like it has uh, electroencephalograph or whatever it is. It has uh, basically an electric sonar that it sends out electrical pulses and they go out all the way, I think up to like two miles away and will come back to them and tell them they also have a great sense of smell so that it can discern blood in the water from miles away. But think about that. So a shark could represent something discerning or someone that's really good at something in their business. But on the negative context, it could represent something bad, evil, or a person who's a hustler 
or something like that. Okay. So don't get it in your head that something's always bad or always good. You have to look at all of the different things and discern what the contexts are. Like the fact that I can sit here and tell you, well, this is what this represents. It's not because I've done it for so long and it always means that. It's because Holy Spirit immediately puts it in because I spend, have spent and do spend lots of time listening to his voice. We want to get to know him. You get to listen to him. You get to know his voice by spending time listening to him. And that will help you interpret dreams. Okay. So sex represents intimacy or coming into a covenant agreement with something. So we have here, um, this man wanted to date me. So, and spend time with me. And I let him sleep with in with me in bed that night. So to sleep in bed represents a bed represents a place of rest or place of peace or pr a place of intimacy. Okay. So she's sleeping. So this is rest and intimacy because it's with her. They're in agreement. So she says, this person wanted to date me, so I let them rest in a place of intimacy and rest with me that night. We didn't have sex, so this is uh, co commitment, covenant. Um, we didn't have covenant or anything, but I didn't hide it from my family. So she wasn't doing something she wasn't supposed to do in this case. She didn't. She wasn't covenanting with this person coming into that type of agreement where it's a like it's a whatever you want to call it. But she is worried about what her family would think. And so she's worried that they're going to tell her boyfriend and that her boyfriend's going to break up with her. And so in that case, the boyfriend represents something you're not fully in agreement with, but you are in a relationship with. So it's a level of commitment higher than what you're committed to. She doesn't want to commit to whatever this other person is or thing is that's coming into her life that wants to have closeness and intimacy with her, she's giving it a try, but she's not getting committed to it. Sex represents a covenant in this context. She's not committing to it, but she's afraid that her family, her friends are going to perceive that she's more interested in this than in what she's currently agreed to, but she's not completely tied down to. Okay, so it's not a dream about her cheating. It's a dream about her starting to do something that she's worried about what other people are going to think and how that's going to affect um, her in the future. And if it, it, it could represent person or people group that she's involved with that would shun her for searching out something that's different from what they believe. Okay. And I will, uh, I think I'll go ahead and wrap it up here. <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to go ahead and wrap it up here. And I will see you guys next time. Remember, go to rumble.com backslash fireside grace. Go watch our new tomorrow's headlines today if you haven't already seen it. I literally just did it about an hour ago. So you're going to want to go see that. I know I've done three tomorrow's headlines today, but Rumble makes it so fun. I can say whatever I want. So go there and check it out if you want to. Support us. It's firesidegrace.com backslash partner with us. You can find us on Venmo's Brandy Dash Cloninger. Down in the bottom here is our description for the crypto things that we have or whatever if you want to do that. Um, our mailing address or, or our PayPal is Reformers Church with no apostrophe because I don't believe in apostrophizing. And our mailing address is Reformers Church at 2145 North Josie Lane Suite 116-501 Carrollton, Texas 7 five zero zero six whoo that is a mouthful remember to like and subscribe because even though we're not doing tomorrow's headlines today on youtube we are still using youtube so love you guys be blessed and i will see you next time until then bye